There's some young ladies who are handing out the announcement sheets. I'm not going to make all the announcements. Just a couple that I need to highlight, but uh, make sure that you pick up one of these announcement sheets. Or raise your hand if you didn't get one, and Brooke Jean will give you one. Brooke, Ashley Carlton needs one. No, she was raising her hand. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to mention all those that are on there because they're numerous. That's why we've made a sheet for you. But just a couple of things I want to mention. Cody and Abby had their baby on Saturday. And uh, baby Remy, Remington Jane. She is a big baby. 8 pounds, 11 ounces, and 21 inches long. And they're doing well, though. The youth backpacking trip, you guys are having a backpacking trip the end of this month. There's going to be an information meeting regarding that this coming Sunday after the morning service in adult classroom A, after the second service. So you, youth and parents, if you're interested in that, please make sure you go to that informational meeting. Also want you to know, the way the directories are done, we can... Uh, make updates available there are updates available out on the table so in order to keep your directory up to date pick up a pile of those updates and insert them at the proper place in your directory the last thing i do want to highlight uh, tyler's mentioned this a couple times it's been in the bulletin uh, the youth are going on a mission trip this summer but it's also for the whole congregation it's going to be to bio Battery, alabama at a church good church there laura and i know this church well we used to work with them when we lived pretty close to there um, if you want more information on that see tyler i want to emphasize this is not only for the youth group it's for anybody in our church who wants to go on this mission trip and work with that church this is a really good church who does more with less than any church I have ever seen in my life. This is a poor church ministering to a poor community that has about 80% unemployment. Can you believe that? In Biolabatria. It used to be a, a thriving uh, sh shrimping center, but after hurricanes and the, the oil spill several years back, it's really bad. Poverty stricken. This church is the place to go in that town if you need help. And so it's a great, great ministry. Do have some prayer requests. Um, Lynn Brantley Jr. called, said his dad, he's home from the hospital, but he was diagnosed with systolic heart failure. It's very serious. He's being treated at home now, but he has a long road ahead. So we need to make sure that we're playing, praying for Lynn Sr. Very, very difficult. Also, Sammy Morales called a little bit ago, and her mother passed away today. She's been on our prayer list for a while, so make sure that we remember Sammy, Ashley, her daughter, uh, Miranda, and uh, that family in our prayers. Okay, I'm going to lead us in a prayer now, and we are going to have a prayer service tonight, so we'll save the rest of the prayers for then. So, uh, oh, I forgot one thing before we pray. Next week we're having pizza, so we don't need anybody to bring anything other than if someone wants to bring maybe a couple of big salads to go along with pizza, that would be really good. Okay, let's pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you for allowing us to be together here on a Wednesday night as a church family. We're thankful to you for everyone in this church, and we ask your richest blessings on each and every person. For those that we've just mentioned who are having some serious problems, we, we pray for your blessings on them, for Lynn Brantley Sr. especially, having these serious heart problems. Uh, this is a good family, a good man, walked with you his, his whole life. We just pray that you'll bless him and take care of him and his wife and their immediate family at this time. We pray for her peace and comfort to be with Sammy Morales on the passing of her mother and Ashley and Miranda and that family. And we just pray that you will bring them the peace and the comfort that only you can give to them and help us to be a source of comfort to them as well during this difficult time. We know there are always lots of other prayer requests that go unspoken. Uh, everybody has issues going on in their life of different sorts. And we just pray that you'll help all of us to look to you for strength and for guidance 
and for direction. And we just pray that we will always lean upon you. Be with us tonight in here as we have a prayer service. Be with the teenage class and the children's classes. We pray that you'll bless the teachers. And we pray that you'll bless all who are in the classes to, to have an attitude of wanting to learn and grow and be closer to you. We pray all these things through Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's be saying. It kept on the hills of light. He Christians all who tried and pressed the battle there the night. Shall build the glowing skies against the void hills below that are sinking earth. Patriots of victory we know that overcome the world. Patriots of victory.
share our song before we dismiss for our classes and begin our prayer service. So if you would, let's be standing for this last song.
Uh, the prayers of a righteous person. Righteous doesn't mean perfect. It means a person, though, who is serious about their life with God is trying to follow it. Those prayers are powerful and effective. Now, I believe the Bible teaches pretty plainly because there are lots of examples I could give. But, uh, you know, there's a thought, there is a teaching out there that says God never changes his mind. Y'all heard this before, probably? And there are verses that say that. However, if you look in the context, those verses are talking about that particular episode. There are lots of places in the Bible where God changes his mind. Uh, for example, you might remember God was so upset with the Israelites because they were so wicked and sinful. He was about to destroy them all and make a new nation out of Moses. Do you all remember that in the book of Exodus? He said, I'm dumb with you. You guys are wicked and your hearts are so hardened and you're so evil and I'm just done with you. Moses, I'll just start over and make a new nation out of you. Moses talked God out of it. I don't know how else to read it. That's what it says. Moses pled with God and God changed his mind. Now, that's not the only place in the Bible that happened. The reason I'm saying that is God values us so much, he really listens to us. You can actually change the mind of God about something that he was intending to do. And the way that things are, this is why we pray, because prayer affects the way that things are. So what I want us to pray about tonight is I have two things that I'm going to pray about. And then I'm going to leave it up to you. You know, because sometimes God puts things on your heart, right? What I'm thinking about that needs to be prayed about regarding this church body and what you're thinking that needs to be prayed about about this church body might not be the same thing. I believe the Holy Spirit convicts people like Jesus said in John chapter 16. I believe the Holy Spirit puts things into people's heart and mind and if we ask for his guidance he will direct us into what are those things that our church family really needs to pray about. So I'm going to pray about two things. And then when I finish praying, these are things that I think our church family, I'm, I'm concerned about, quite honestly. Maybe there are things you're concerned about, about our church family. I'd like us to focus on our church family and what God's laid on your heart to pray about for our church family. Keeping in mind, as this verse says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. As we ask God, God's going to hear us. And if we can focus tonight on when, when these men, when they come up, I'm going to say a prayer and then I'm going to sit down. I'm going to leave the microphone up here. And then whoever wants to come up and pray. Let's all try to really follow what the person is saying and really be consciously thinking about our prayers lifting up through this building and up into the heaven where God is. And knowing that he's going to hear our prayers. Here's two things I'm concerned about with our church. We have a good church. I love our church, but no church is perfect, right? Because there are people there. One thing is, I'm concerned that our church doesn't know one another very well. Uh, I, I could give you some specific instances, but uh, it appears to me like, and this is, Throughout our whole church, all age groups and all people. We kind of know the people that we know. Maybe 20, 25. And there are other people who are members of our church and we don't even know that they're members of our church. Or we might vaguely recognize them, but we really don't know anything about them. To me, I think that's a big deal. I'm kind of one of these guys that I like to know everybody who's in my church family. I don't know everything about everybody, but I want to know who they are. You know, when I look at Jill right here, I want to know that's Jill Carlisle. You know, I want to know something about Jill Carlisle, her husband, Michael, and their family. And when I see other people, you know, when I see John Ross, Right there. Set in front of Steve Mitchell. Even though they haven't 
become members of this church family yet. They've been very active here in the last several months. And I want to pay attention to him and his wife, Christy. I want to know who they are. I want to know, you know, Christina Mitchell. And I want to know the uh, everybody in this church. If you don't know people, you can't pray for them specifically, right? So I think, how many of you would admit, just, you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but just think about it. Do you kind of find out that you only know a select group of people in this church, but you don't know a whole bunch of other people? I don't know what you need to do about that, but I think it's a problem. I'll tell you what I do about it. I walk around and I talk to everybody. And I try to pay attention. If I haven't talked to somebody in a long time, uh, you know, if I haven't talked to Mike and Annette in a long time, for example, I'm like, man, it's been four or five weeks since I've talked to them. Because you can't talk to everybody every Sunday. There's too many people. I'm going to make it a point that next Sunday I haven't talked to them in a while. I'm going to go talk to them or somebody else that I haven't seen. The other thing I do is, and this will help you, write people's names down. That's, if you can just look at the card, I just use note cards, and I just write, I have a stack of note cards in my office, and I just, I look at the note cards all the time. It's not that I have a brilliant memory, it's I cheat. <laughs> I make note cards, and I look at those note cards, and if you look at something enough times, you'll, you'll start getting it down. So that's one thing I'm concerned about. God wants our church family to be close. And uh, it helps to know people's name and know something about one another. I don't think it's good in a church where members of the same church pass one another in the hallway or the foyer or whatever. Don't even acknowledge each other because we don't know who they are. I, I would like it to be where, you know, we come and everybody knows everybody. And there aren't, there's no such thing as the cranial side, the scurry side, and the hybrid mix, whatever is in the middle. You know, it's we all, everybody mixes with everybody because we're all members of the church. I think that's what God wants. So whatever you need to do about that, uh, I want us to pray about that. The other thing I'm concerned about is, I think there's quite a few people in this church, quite a few families, and I think it's, Especially been pronounced this past year because of all the COVID stuff and the separation that that's caused. I think Satan, well, he's always at work. He's looking for any little opportunity or any little opening. But I think for some people, not for everybody, there's some people that are staying away for legitimate health concerns. I understand that. But I know there's quite a few who have been deceived by Satan. And they've just gotten comfortable sitting at home. And we have to remember that the church is God's design, right? The church, meaning a group of people gathered together, focusing on God and living life together spiritually, that was God's design to help us grow spiritually. And you're just not going to grow spiritually if you're trying to do Christianity by yourself. And I think some of our members, in fact, I know some of them have gotten comfortable and have, are self-deceiving themselves. I'll just give you an example. I won't mention names, but and this is not one family or two. It's quite a few families in our church. You'll talk to them. And these are good people. They're Christians. But... They'll say, well, we're staying away because of COVID and because of, you know, the spread of the virus and all that. And yet, you'll get on Facebook and you'll see posts of them going everywhere and doing everything. Their kids are involved in all kinds of activities, no mask. They're out doing this and doing that and gathered together with big bunches of people everywhere. So they can do all that, but they won't come to church. Now, I can't judge their hearts, but Jesus said you know people by the fruits. I'm not stupid either. But I mean, yeah, I think some people are self-deceived. That concerns me. Because I think all of us sometimes, if we're not careful, we can deceive ourselves into thinking that we're really walking with Christ and we're really following Him. And maybe it's 
really not happening. We've deceived ourselves into thinking we are. So those are the two things I want to pray about. So I'm going to pray about those two things, and I'm just going to leave the microphone up here. And then just one by one, if we can have men come up and pray about what God has put on your heart about this church and how we can be stronger and how we can be uh, people closer to God. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and for his sacrifice on the cross and for his resurrection from the dead and for the hope that that gives to us. We're thankful to you for this church, the Landmark Church of Christ. We ask your blessings on our church family. Lord, we have a good church here, and you blessed us in so many ways. But there are these couple of things that I am concerned about, particularly things that I have noticed. I know there's always new people coming in, and that's a good thing. And maybe that the turnover makes it difficult sometimes to know who people are, but I am concerned that we, as a church family, by and large, kind of only know select little pockets of our church family, and we don't know the larger group of our own brothers and sisters of Christ in our own church. I pray that you'll convict all of our hearts. Whatever individuals need to do, you know who needs to change in that way and who doesn't. Some are very good about moving around and knowing uh, others and making it a point to, uh, to get to know others so that they can pray for them and so that they can have a relationship with them. But I know there's some who aren't. And I know you know whose hearts need to be convicted. So I just pray that you'll work on all of our hearts and help us to be brotherly and sisterly to everybody in this church because all our members of this congregation help us to, to greet one another as your word says. Greet one another with the holy kiss. We are to greet one another, to know one another, to show love and kindness and acceptance to one another. And I just pray that you will help that to break out in a far larger degree than it is right now. Help us not to be segmented by this group and that group. Help us just to be the landmark Church of Christ. Help us to be your people. God, also, I, I want to pray that you'll help people in our church who have been deceived into thinking that the reason that they are staying away is because of COVID. We know there are some that is the case, and we... Uh, we value that. We understand that. We ask your blessings on them. And for those who are staying away, being deceived by that reason, but yet they go out and have interaction with all kinds of other groups of people, I pray that you will help it to dawn upon them. I pray that you will work through your Holy Spirit to convict their hearts and minds of the fact that they are fooling themselves. And that maybe they have just gotten comfortable and it's become convenient to stay away uh, during this time of distancing. And I just pray that soon you will end this whole virus situation and that our country in one way can go back to a sense of normalcy. But in another way, I pray that we won't be like normal before. Help us to be closer to each other and closer to you than we ever have been before. We just pray for this church that you'll put your hand of blessing on us in these ways and we know that you hear our prayer we know it's powerful and effective and we just pray that you will be at work and we pray all these things in the name of jesus our lord and savior amen, amen.
many families and friends here I've made over the past five years, I've made good connections with, but I couldn't imagine them not in my life. I pray, Lord, that I do a better job and continue to meet others. Perhaps I can help them as much as they help myself and my family. I pray, Lord, that, that we all do that, we all make efforts to help one another. Because we all have good hearts here and we all mean well. And maybe it just takes a little bit extra effort. I pray, Lord, people perhaps using the COVID as, as a crutch and just help them to realize that, that, that they're missing out and we miss them and, and we need them. We need them. They may need us, but we need them. We all definitely need you. We're just so thankful for everything. We pray, Lord, that you will just, just be with us and, and help us to make good decisions and help us to grow, help us to be in your word, help us to set an example for the young ones that are coming, the, the next generation, so that maybe we can set a good example of what closeness is all about. Once again, we thank you for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. back over the 10, 11, 12 years that Hope and I have been attending this body of yours here for Lord. When we come here, as you well know, I had, I had put on my heart that this was my last stop. If this one didn't work, I would stay at home. It has been a blessing being amongst these brothers and sisters that meet you. I don't find a stranger. Now, I don't kiss everybody like Mike said, but I kiss the pretty ones. <laughs> and Father, I'll joke about that because I love everybody. But we have let the devil creep in on us, whether it was in a, in a virus form or just because we opened the door for them. But we have a problem. And it's the devil. We have allowed him to infiltrate our home. We need to get back with a smile on our face, enjoying what we have, what you have given us. I myself spend most of my day in the pasture with a bunch of women. And they mind me until they get mad. Then I have to straighten my head. And you all know I'm talking about cattle. But there are people out here that I have to be associated with and, and be in contact with or my battery completely will discharge. And when my battery discharges, the word is what I fall back on. I try my best never to discharge my battery. But we have been hurting in the last year or so, Father, for what? We blame on COVID. But our telephone still works. And when we let Satan drive us away from enjoying our time and fellowship together, he's smiling and enjoying it all the way. Forgive us for that, Father. Continue to bring us back and help us to stay in your word because the answer is inside the pages of that word. Thank you in his name. Amen. <laughs> places that we get to be Christians. It's inside the church building and it's outside the church building. <clears throat> Some of us do really good inside the church building and not so good outside and vice versa. Some of us are really good fellowship and outside 
represent you and then inside the building you get a little too comfortable. Lord, uh, comfort is really one of our biggest uh, hurdles, one of our biggest pitfalls. Uh, it's real easy to get too comfortable in our small group. Really easy to get comfortable at home during the during this uh, COVID deal. Lord, uh, we pray for courage for all of us. We, we are all your disciples, Lord. Each disciple here, we pray for courage to, to get out of our comfort zone, Lord. To approach those that we normally wouldn't approach. To, to uh, Get off the sofa, get out the house, and go places, and, and chat with folks. I, I wasn't always a good talker, and um, that, that, you know, I know it's something you got to do here. We can't reach people unless we open our mouth and open our mind and our heart. So, Lord, I pray that we, uh, as a congregation and as disciples, we, we do a better job of not getting too comfortable, Lord. Um, and in that, too, is uh, I know my own self, um, humility, Lord, because uh, I know the times where I've stumbled through life and uh, not done well, Lord, is, is when I think I know everything and, and uh, I try to do everything on my own, Lord. So uh, I pray that all of us we take on humility, Lord, and, uh, and uh, you know, of course, troubled times, Lord, uh, help us to persevere. Uh, I know times where keep me on track is when you knock me off my high horse, Lord. Uh, you know, I, I need that every now and then. Um, you you knock down a couple notches and be reminded that I don't know everything. Don't let my wife know I don't know everything. We'll keep it between us. Um, but um, yes, Lord, just we can't get too comfortable, Lord. And, and, and uh, disciples, let us remember that. Um, keep the pressure on us. Don't keep us too comfortable. Knock us off our high horse when we need it, Lord. And. Uh, Keep that challenge upon us, Lord, to be disciples inside the church building and outside the church building. Your son Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father, we're thankful for this day, for the time that we have together here as your children, as a family. We're thankful for your word, which answers any questions that we might have about this life and how to live. We're thankful for Christ who came and left us an example, and went to the cross and gave us hope. Especially thankful for this past week. Uh, the whole world recognized Christ, it seemed like. And I'm thankful, Lord, that this year we're concentrating our efforts on studying Christ and His life. Pray that you would be with us as a body, that you would convict our hearts, that what we study, that we would learn that we would, would put it to use in our lives, which would draw us closer together with each other, draw us closer to you. We pray that as we, as we 
open your word and we study your word, that we don't only just try to apply it, but Lord, that we will live your word in our life. We pray that this past year will convict us that we know we need you more in our lives. We need to lean on you. That if we really think about it, we can't do nothing without you. You give us the even the air that we breathe that keeps us alive. So we pray, Lord, that we would think about things more and realize that our plans and the things that we do are all dependent upon you. And we're nothing without you. Pray that you'd be with us as a body, as your children. Help us to always grow in love for each other, to serve one another. to be bonded through Christ. It's through His blessed name we pray. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat>
And we're so thankful for that sacrifice that Christ has given to us, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are that are not here tonight, Lord. Be it the sick ones are shut in as Lord, maybe some that are out on the roads traveling, Lord. Please be with all those, keep them safe, heal them. Lord, but most of all, we pray for the ones that are just plain out, not even hearing, Lord. There's the ones that have no excuse, Lord, that they're putting the worldly things ahead of you. Lord, we pray that we can open our hearts to them, Lord, through the avenues that you give us, Lord, and touch base with them, Lord, and encourage them and tell them that we love them. Tell them that we miss them. Lord, and just in that loving way, attempt to bring bring them back to the church services, Lord. Lord, help us to help each other that are here tonight, Lord, and give us that strength, give us that encouragement. Help us to really sit back and look, Lord, and just to see how really blessed we are. Throwing the cares of this world to the side, Lord. Maybe changing our lives a little bit to where we stop so much of this worldly living. And live more of how you would have us live, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everyone here tonight. Our elders, our deacons, song leaders, preacher, Lord secretary, our teachers, all the way down to our little children, Lord. And we look at all this, Lord. We look at all these people. And we're just so blessed to have them, Lord. Lord, help us to be encouragement to each other. Help us to encourage our members that are not here. So Christ, I'm up Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank all the men who have come up to lead us in prayer tonight. I think it's a really good thing that we started this about two years ago where we have uh, we devote the first Wednesday of every month to a prayer time because many of you are a little bit older grew up in a time where Wednesday night was, what was it called? Prayer, yeah, prayer service or prayer meeting or something like that. But we've kind of gotten away from it, so this is a good thing for us to get back to. Uh, kind of in the spirit of some of these prayers that have been mentioned tonight, you know, I mentioned earlier in the announcements that uh, Sammy Morales' mother passed away. A couple of you mentioned in your, in your prayer, you know, we could pick up a phone. When people are grieving and when they're hurting, you may not even know Sammy Morales. Uh, it's, but she's part of our church. You may not even know her, but pick up your phone and call her and say, Hey, I heard about your mother. I just want you to know I'm so sorry for you. Her daughter's Ashley. Ashley was our secretary before Laura was our secretary. And then uh, Sammy's other daughter, daughter is Miranda. And they, they were here this past uh, Sunday. They're, or no, Sunday before. They weren't here last, last Sunday because her, grand, her mother wasn't feeling well. So they stayed home with her on Easter Sunday. But uh, that's one way to get to know people, even if, even if you don't know them. And as I mentioned earlier, just kind of by way of closing, if we could all just kind of make an effort, maybe you're one of those people. We have quite a few in here I know. You make an effort to get around and to know people. But maybe you don't know very many people in our church other than your little group. Maybe move around every once in a while. Um, it's not in the Bible anywhere that you have to sit in the same place every Sunday. I mean, uh, you know, Joel and Kim, if y'all want to completely freak people out this Sunday, go and sit on the other side over there where the, by Jakey and Judy or somewhere over there. <laughs> that people would think, what is going on? Is Jesus coming back today? Uh, that, that's just one way to get to know people. Whatever, you, whatever it is you have to do. Maybe stand at the door and greet people. Or just walk around. If you don't know who people are, just go and talk to them. Do what? That's your job. Everybody needs to have that job that Robert has. Walk around and, and talk to people. 
Uh, one thing, I'll just close with this. One thing, I, I just did an example here, and I don't mean to embarrass this person, but I thought this was a good example. It just kind of made an impression on me. We have a member at our church. His wife passed away uh, several months ago. His, his name is Ronnie Cortez. Her name is Mary Cortez. And she passed away. And he has no other family that goes to our church here. But one thing that really impressed me, Buck, Ronnie would come in, and he still does this. Ronnie Cortez would come in, he's very lonely. And Buck, when Buck sees him come in, Buck gets up and leaves Patsy and goes over and sets by him during the whole service. That's a good thing. You didn't know him very well before that either, did you? He just made it a point. Even though he didn't know, but he's a member of our church. His wife passed away. I don't know him, but he's part of our church. He just reached out to him and then goes over and starts sitting by him. And he still does that every time he comes to church instead of having him sit there by himself. That's probably a little bit uncomfortable at first, wasn't it, Buck? But you get used to it. And that's also kind of in the spirit of what a couple of you prayed for. God hasn't called us to be comfortable. I have my comfort zones just like you do, but sometimes you need to force yourself or make yourself do something in the name of love because as Robert prayed for, make us more loving people. That really in a nutshell is what it's all about. So whatever you need to do to work on yourself to be more of the people of God, uh, I just pray that you'll take that part. Let's close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time that we've been able to be together and to see each other's faces, to spend time talking about you and praying to you. I just pray that you'll help us to be the people that you would have us to be. Help us to show love and kindness and reach out to those in our church who are hurting. Help us to look for people that we don't know and befriend them and to greet one another, be able to greet one another by name, by making an intentional, conscious effort to know our brothers and sisters in Christ. And to, when we come here, help us not to be thinking about me and what people can do for me, but help us to be thinking about how I can serve others, how I can lay down my life for others, how I can be a blessing to other people. And if we all did that, if we all acted like Christ all the time, it would just make it everything so much a better place. So as we leave here, we ask your blessing on every individual and every family. Help us to take Christ with us as we go out into the world. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.